Assalamu alaikum, my dear brothers and sisters. Uh, today I would like to talk about um, Apostate Prophet. Twice I invited him for a friendly dialogue. And uh, I had two friendly di dialogue with him. Hello, everybody, and welcome. This is the Apostate Prophet. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Uh, I certainly am. Uh, please let us know, everybody, if everything looks and sounds... Not something new. It's not a contradiction. Yes, my brother. <laughs> Quran chapter 3, verse 7, clearly sure. says that it is he who sent, has sent... But I realize that uh, you cannot have dialogue with uh, such a people, like opposite prophet, who uh, just think about their business, they don't care about the truth, and uh, he's quite uneducated, and uh, like other uh, so-called ex-Muslims. I have had the debate with uh, other so-called ex-Muslims like uh, Harris Sultan and Armin Nabavi, and unfortunately they all um, have zero knowledge about everything. And uh, here you see that, uh, for example, this uh, Haris Sultan, he even doesn't know that uh, in 21st century, people bury their daughters alive in India. And I was talking to him about uh, people who were burying their daughters alive 1400 years ago, and he was denying it. I'm Satan just saying is, it. Just playing yes, with words. Satan, I would Satan say Muhammad was a Satan. Sorry? I would I would say Muhammad was a Satan. I mean that doesn't mean anything. Potato potato, okay, like you can call okay, anything. Then. You can call anything anything you want. Satan is a is an imaginary character. And if if, if if I if I do something good to someone, you say, oh God filled his heart with mercy. And if I if I go and stab someone, you'll be like, oh Satan did it. You know. So this is just a circular yeah. logic, Mr. circular Harris. reasoning. Mr. There's Mr. no no Mr. evidence behind any of that. Mister Harris, you said uh, Muhammad was Satan. Uh, let me see. Uh, no, no, I'm saying it could be. I'm saying no, I could say that. Let me see, Mr. Harris. You are very, very, uh, you know, unfair because at the time of Muhammad, when he came, uh, Hindu, uh, sorry, the, the pagans there, they were burying their daughters alive, okay? So how come a Satan came and... It's a lie. It's a lie. Satan. How how did Khadija survive? How did okay. Muhammad's mother survive? Right. There, there, there okay. might have been one or two instances. But what we have, we have evidence of women who were successful, who were successful business women at the time of Muhammad. We, we, we actually have the record of that. So, you know, this is another lie that is concocted. And because, because it, made, it made you feel good, that's why you are happy to take those riots that, okay. they, that, they, were, they, I, that they were burying can children. I explain, can I explain something, Mr. Harris? You have Google front of you, okay? Check how many girls have been killed in India for the past 20 years. I Google it, 10 million people, the girls, have been killed in India before or after birth, okay? Listen to me, Mr. Harris. Not even one of them are Muslim, okay? Nothing to Hindus, do with Islam. Hindus, even today, they are burying their daughters alive in India because no, they're not. of the shame of their daughters. They're not burying them alive. So, they're not burying sorry? them alive. They're not sorry? burying them alive. They're not burying them alive. They, what, they, what there has been, there's been a case of selection where people choose the gender of their baby, and that's what happened in China as well. Mr. Mr. And then they've been aborting. They've been aborting. They've been aborting where, where, um, where some people find out okay, it's a daughter instead of a boy, but they're Mr. not burying them alive. So you see, after I told him that they they buried their daughters alive, he said that uh, even if it is true, he he still cannot understand that it is true. I will put all these. That's fine. Look, that doesn't prove anything. So even if it's true, let me. I I don't know about that. But even if it's true, that's got nothing to do with Islam and the claim that Arabs were burying their daughters alive. He said that's nothing to do with Arab were burying their daughters alive. So if they were not burying their daughters alive, then why Prophet Muhammad uh, says in Quran? Then people of Arabia at that time would say that what? Who does that? Who bury his daughter alive? So people were doing it. That's why Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in Quran says that about uh, people bury their daughters alive. They kill their daughters. 
Well, in India, a couple in Uttar Pradesh has found a newborn baby girl buried alive in a grave. Police are searching for the parents. More on this report. Pooja and her husband were digging a grave for their deceased daughter when their spade hit an earthen pot. What they found shocked them, a living baby girl crying inside. According to a government survey released in July, the number of girls is dwindling in India. Boys are preferred over girls because of employment prospects and patriarchal social norms. Police suspect that the burial of the discovered baby happened with the parents' consent. British medical journal The Lancet found that up to 12 million girls had been aborted in India over the last three decades. Here we see two men were arrested while they were burying their uh, little girl alive. No, Mr. And even if they were doing it, even if Mr. they were doing it, I can turn it around. I can turn it around. So Muhammad said, stop burying your daughter because when they grow up, I want to marry them all. Okay. You know, I can make up anything I want. Look at this trash. Look at this trash. When he realized that he didn't have knowledge and there were evidences, proof that they were burying their daughters alive, he turned it around. They just want to reject, you know. That's why these people <clears throat> should be stopped. These people are like ISIS and Taliban because they spread hate against Muslims and they even spread extremism. Because they say everywhere that uh, Islam says that you have to kill apostates, you have to, you know, stone adulterers, all this uh, trash which Taliban and ISIS promote. That's why they have to be stopped. Okay. You know, I... uh, last year I was uh, having a debate with this uh, Armin Nabavi, and I was explaining for him about, uh, you know, about pulsing. Um, theory in in Quran which uh, how the world will end I was explaining about uh, the solution to all our problems in Islam but I realized that again the same thing that these people they cannot even understand what's going on uh, in 21st century on this planet how they know uh, about solution to all our problems uh, how they know uh, about uh, <clears throat> you know how the world will end this Armin Nabavi is so uneducated, he doesn't know even what's going on uh, in his own country, which is, of course, my country as well, Iran. He doesn't understand anything about what's going on in his own country. And that's actually for the sake of the audience to explain, because right. I know exactly what you're saying, and I think that that's exactly what he's doing. So let's yeah. um, have him uh, explain his theory and just I don't think it. he's the best person for explaining it. Do you want to just bring it up and just read it for us? No, no, no. I, let's have him hear his case and let's counter um, it. Okay. I think because for the audience, I think that'll be better because they'll get an idea of, we want to know how this kind of mindset works, this right? Is the way so that he's talking about. Pathetic, the way but okay. Hold on. Well, very, 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 I'm reading it. it. Okay. Okay. Mm hmm so such stars that it's about stars. Can explain it in his words, and then after that, you can say anything you want to. This uh, uneducated guy says it's about stars. The pulsing theory is about stars. It's not about the stars, it's about how the world will end. Okay, okay so uh, much, uh, much about the Go ahead. Teach us, teach us about the, is, uh, the pulsation. Yes, so we'll, yes. we'll hear you out, and then we'll, uh, Armin will respond. Go ahead. All right. And he is reading right there, you know, exactly what I said. He started to read from Google that what is pulsing theory, despite Prophet Muhammad 1400 years ago, has said how the world will end. The third scenario where the rubber band wins out, that corresponds to a possible future in which the force of gravity brings the universe's expansion to a halt and then reverses it. Galaxies would start rushing towards each other, and as they clumped together, their gravitational pull would get even stronger. Stars, too, would hurtle together and collide, 
Temperatures would rise as space would get tighter and tighter. The size of the universe would plummet until everything compressed into such a small space that even atoms and subatomic particles would have to crunch together. The result would be an incredibly dense, hot, compact universe. A lot like the state that preceded the Big Bang, this is the Big Crunch. Could this tiny point of matter explode in another Big Bang? Could the universe expand and contract over and over again, repeating its entire history? The theory describing such a universe is known as the Big Bounce. In fact, there's no way to tell how many bounces could have already happened or how many might happen in the future. Each bounce would wipe away any record of the universe's previous history. The day when we will fold the heaven like a folding of a written sheet, as we began the first creation, we will repeat it. That is a promise bending upon us. Indeed, we will do it. Have those who disbelieve not consider that the heavens and the earth were a joint entity, and we separated them and made from water every living thing, then will they not believe? So here, Quran is talking about that the world was a joint entity before the Big Bang, and we separated them. It means the Big Bang that separated everything from, from that joint gas. This video is uh, from 1948 in the desert, and who believed that 1400 years ago a man could talk about pulsing theory, he could talk about universe at all, he could talk about the beginning of the universe, he could talk about separation of everything from a joint entity. It is absolutely irrational to think like this, that he could ever even talk about such a thing. Then after this, it came out that I support uh, an organization in Iran and that is fighting Iranian fascist regime called MEK. And look his reaction, this Armin Nababi. I, ha I am following an organization, okay? I don't know if they are not, uh, <clears throat> they are not uh, famous maybe worldwide, but uh, they are famous uh, by Iranians, okay? Uh, it is an organization called MEK. And, uh, oh my God, are you serious? You're, yes. Jesus, you're part of a terrorist cult. This uneducated Armin Nababi uh, calls MEK a terrorist organization because Iranian fascist regime teach him that uh, MEK is a terrorist organization, the organization that I'm supporting. And I have put uh, much more uh, you know, explanation and evidences uh, on the video that I had a debate with him, Armin Nababi, one year ago. I will put the link there uh, for that uh, video as well uh, on this stream. But anyway, uh, I just very fast uh, explained that uh, MEK was put in terrorist list by President Clinton in 1997 when uh, a so-called um, reformist president came to power in Iran. And in order to empower this uh, so-called reformists against the hardliners in Iran, so he put MEK in terrorist list so that uh, appeased this um, so-called reformist uh, president. And then um, MEK went to the court, uh, a court in Washington, and that uh, Washington Washington court gave um, Hillary Clinton. Um, 180 days to come with the evidences to the court and uh, to prove that MEK is a terrorist uh, organization. But uh, Hillary Clinton disappeared 600 days and she didn't come with a single proof. And what happened? The court uh, wrote uh, a new letter to Hillary Clinton and said that if you don't come with a proof in 120 days, then we will remove MEK from terrorist list. 
And because she didn't have a single proof that MEK is a terrorist organization and all was political uh, because of a political reason. So uh, Hillary Clinton, after 120 days, was forced to remove MEK from the terrorist list. Now who believes that a great man like uh, Senator John McCain, who was going to be USA president, supports a terrorist group? I will be honored to serve next to the next president of the United States. <laughs> Thank you for being an example, an example to the whole world that those people who are willing to fight and sacrifice for freedom will achieve it. And you are an example to everyone in the world that's struggling for it. Uh, here's what I will tell you. If you, once, you go, once you go look at the research, I could tell you this. Um, as much as I hate Islam, the MEK ideology is by far worse than Islam could ever be. MEK is a more toxic, dangerous idea than MEK, than Islam itself, okay? Now, one thing that this ignorant Armin Nababi doesn't understand is that we Iranian, we are proud of our, uh, you know, 2,500 years of uh, great history and culture. And... Iran is now ruled by a bunch of barbarian mullahs uh, who stone adulterers, chop hands, and uh, kill apostates. They do all, you know, uh, barbaric uh, acts against Iranian people. And at the same time, the most educated people uh, in my home country uh, they have gathered in this organization. They are highly educated. They are all engineers and doctors. According to this uneducated person, Armin Nababi, they are worse than the mullahs uh, in Iran. And they are the biggest opposition against the Iranian regime. So if somebody outside thinks that how can such a great uh, nation uh, with such a great history doesn't have... Uh, a good, uh, you know, alternative to such a barbaric regime. They are all the same. So he doesn't even understand what he's talking about. How, I mean, what this, uh, when he says that MEK is worse than Iranian uh, fascist regime, what kind of message he gives out. But on another hand, I am proud that this, we have the perfect organization, the perfect, perfect opposition against this uh, Iranian fascist regime that uh, I cannot find uh, a single opposition group in the entire human history like MEK that has been standing against such a fascist regime and uh, unfortunately uh, Europe, USA also have been helping Iranian regime trying to destroy MEK but they couldn't. So this organization is unique in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic, tens of thousands of Iranians, supporters of National Council of Resistance of Iran, NCRI, will attend the largest ever virtual gatherings, Free Iran Global Summit, on Friday, July 17, 2020. Hundreds of distinguished international political dignitaries and bipartisan lawmakers will be joining them. Partial list of speakers. Rudy Giuliani, former New York mayor. Joseph Lieberman, Former U.S. Senator, Michelle Elio Marie. Former French MFA, MD, MI. Giulio Terzi, former Italian MFA. John Baird, former Canadian MFA. Michael Mukasey, former U.S. Attorney General. Rama Yad, former French Minister for Human Rights. Linda Chavez, former U.S. NSC member. Ingrid Bentoncourt, former Colombian Senator members of the United States Senate, the U.S. House of Representatives, a cross-party delegation of the British Parliament, members of the European Parliament from different political groups, members of the German Federal Parliament, members of the French National Assembly, and members of the Italian Parliament would also participate. Now, after seeing all these politicians, uh, like foreign ministers, prime ministers, uh, and many, many parliamentarians who support MEK, and these are just few of them. There are thousands of uh, other politicians and uh, 
parliamentarians who support European and American uh, parliamentarian senators who support MEK, uh, whom we have to believe, Armin Nababi, such an uneducated person, or the courts, several different courts in Europe and USA that said that MEK is not a terrorist group, they are just freedom fighters. We have to believe in them or this army Nababi. <clears throat> so, um, I, um, at the end of my debate with um, uh, Apostate Prophet, somebody who is uh, working with this army Nababi, her, her name is uh, Susanna, she wrote a super chat at the end of the, the, the debate with him. It's nonsense. It's nonsensical. It's a very bad utopia. Susanna. Oh, Susanna. Hey, Susanna. <coughs> Susanna is here. Hey, Susanna. Thank you for the super chat. Said, has Mushtaba been honest about his membership support for the cult terrorist group Mujahideen Khalka, aka MEK? Hi, okay. AP. I hope you're well. Is that a, are you a member of a specific uh, group that is also known as a terrorist okay. group? All right. This is, uh, okay. I would love to uh, explain this. Okay. This is an accusation that Iranian fascist regime is like Adolf Hitler also was saying that uh, the partisans are terrorists, okay? Now, AP heard about MEK for the first time uh, on 18 of November 2021, for the first time. And I explained uh, a little bit for him and he said, okay, uh, I have to look up myself. And two days later, in my second uh, debate with him, uh, which was uh, November 20, after two, day, two days, he came to this conclusion that MEK is a terrorist cult. I told you, the, the, calling, the, the issue is the issue is organization that okay they uh, they are, they are engaged in terrorist the, activities. We know that. Okay, here is a, here is the but issue. What you uh, said, uh, Red one, what you said? You said okay. terrorist terrorist. Whatever it is that, that engage in organizations in political militant activism against the Iran, I don't really care about that. Not against Iran; they are Iranian against Iranian fascist terrorist regime. Okay, Iranian Iran, Iran's regime. government. Whatever. It's completely besides the point. You see, he realized that he made a, a stupid mistake, and he doesn't know anything about uh, MEK. First, he said a terrorist group, and when I was going to ask him, he, you know, hide the truth. He just uh, ran away from answering. As you see, I had my first debate with uh, Apostate Prophet on November 18, okay, on his channel, stream live on November 18. And then <clears throat> my second debate with him was uh, on November 20, which was on um, modern day debate streamed on November 20. Within two days, he came to this conclusion. Now, here is the YouTube channel of Atheist Republic, uh, where they talk about uh, my debate with the uh, opposite prophet. And uh, you, you rule down, and you see that uh, opposite prophet has commented there, thank you, guys. Oh, thanks, guys. I had no idea. I read further about the cult afterwards, and it made sense. I thought he was only about poorly reforming Islam. So this uneducated apostate prophet, he came to this conclusion within two days. Okay, if you see the the uh, what is the time? Also, here is. Uh, November 20 is two days after I had debate with the uh, Apostate Prophet. And he came to this conclusion that um, MEK is a cult. And then you open here uh, the comments. You see that um, here, Atheist Republic, they have uh, shared a link here. Here is some information about the MEK. When you click on this link, okay, you come to this... Uh, Rajavi's deputy, Mehdi Abrashanchi, voluntarily divorced his wife, Mariam. Okay, it's a little bit slow. When you click on the link, 
it comes to this uh, site or YouTube channel of NIAC, N-I-A-C, okay? So the link is uh, from N-I-A-C. N-I-A-C or NIAC is a lobbyist organization uh, that work for Iranian regime in USA. The guy sitting in the middle, his name is uh, Tarita Parsi. He's the founder of NIAC and uh, he's a lobbyist for Iranian regime. And here you see him uh, running after Iranian delegation and meeting them here as well, the Iranian delegation in USA, okay, because he's uh, just working for Iranian fascist regime. And one uh, also great proof that these uh, uneducated people in 21st century, they cannot even understand this, uh, that this organization is just a freedom fighter organization. How they can understand what happened 1400 years ago in Arabia, 1400 years ago, absolutely they cannot understand. Look. David MS, who was killed in a terrorist attack, he was such a great supporter of uh, such an organization, MEK. Who can believe that uh, Sir David MS could support a terrorist cult? After Razi's emergence as president in Iran, the United Kingdom, European Union, and United States of America must unite behind the NCRI. Its president-elect, Mrs. Mariam Rajavi, and the people of Iran, because they are our best allies to secure a free Iran. We Brits want the Iranian people to enjoy the same freedoms that we do, and we have a very large number of Brits here to join forces with you in this cry to free Iran. Members of the House of Commons, <laughs> members of the House of Lords, We stand united, we each and every one of you, in your battle. And I am sure that our message of a free and democratic Iran will echo all the way to Tehran and other cities and towns across Iran, shaking theocracy to its core. So this year, I have the honour to be here with an even larger delegation from Britain than last year. We represent not only the UK Parliament in a cross-party fashion, but also Scotland, the Law Society of England and Wales, the unions, academia in the UK and Scotland, as well as religious leaders. You know many of us on this stage, as we have been supporting the NCRI and promoting democracy and human rights in Iran for many years. NCRI is National Council Resistance of Iran with many different groups with different uh, beliefs and ideas. But the main group in NCRI is uh, MEK. And Mrs. Mariam Rajavi is the president of uh, NCRI. These people have horrific beliefs. And what he did when he was trying to give explanations, when I brought up this fact in my super chat, he was saying, oh, well, politicians like Mike Pence, we're in, we have international parliamentarians. We have all these politicians that come and support us like Pompeo and Rudy Giuliani. This is deception. This is how they have operated from the beginning. They try to establish themselves as a legitimate alternative to the Islamic Republic of Iran. They're not, they commit horrific crimes. 
Now someone has to say to this uneducated, ignorant Susanna and Armin Nababi that all these politicians who are going to run such a great nations like uh, European nations, Americans, they don't understand they are being deceived by an organization that you, ignorant, you know better than them, all of them. And the horrific crimes that you are talking about, why you didn't come to the court, all these courts, which were one second largest court in Europe, a court in London and a court in Washington, all these courts, you never, not you, not your fascist regime, Iranian fascist regime, not European countries, not the USA, none of them could come with a single evidence to, to the court to prove that MEK has committed horrific crimes. Uh, here's what I will tell you. If you, once you go, once you go look at the research, I could tell you this. Um, as much as I hate Islam, the MEK ideology is by far worse than Islam could ever be. MEK is a more toxic, dangerous idea than MEK, than Islam itself, okay? So for this uneducated uh, Nabavi, MEK is far more toxic than uh, Iranian fascist fundamentalist ISIS regime. Despite in Iranian regime, women are uh, second class, citizens, they have to sit at home, they never have to be able to, you know, um, lead the, the country. But in MEK, women are leaders. Uh, we have uh, a lady called Mrs. Mariam Rajavi as our president. In MEK, women don't pray behind men, they pray uh, in equal line, and women also can lead the prayer as imam. In 2003, when a USA um, uh, occupied Iraq, and because the MEK was at that time in the US terrorist list, because in 1997, President Clinton wanted to appease the Iranian fascist regime. So uh, that's why uh, MEK was still in terrorist list when George Bush uh, attacked Iraq. At that time, U.S. Army sent General Philip to disarm MEK, and they were telling him that you are going to disarm a terrorist group. At that time, U.S. Army sent General Philip to disarm MEK, and they were telling him that MEK is a terrorist organization, and he believed that they are a terrorist organization. But when he came there, uh, he realized that these are not terrorists, they are highly educated people, and he called his daughter, in USA and he told his daughter that I found your uh, Amazonas women in Iraq. I mentioned the Human Rights Watch report and not contacting me, but I was contacted by, from other quarters. Most of it was positive, but there was some negative. On the negative side, they accused me of using my daughter's name in vain. Oh, those foolish people. They don't know my daughter. Like the women of the MEK, my daughter's dedication and determination is a scary thought to the mullahs of Iran. So for those of you that said, I used my daughter's name in vain in that letter, why not hear it from her? As my father said, my name is Sarah Phillips and I am his daughter. I'd like to tell you a little bit of history about how I came to learn about the people of Ashraf. There's a special group of women who do not just let their lives be dictated for them. My father, who was in Iraq at the time, told me. He called me on his international cell phone. I was in a dorm room at the time. I remember him calling and saying, Sarah, I've found your modern day Amazons, those women warriors, the type that you are always seeking and reading about. You will never guess. He told me, you will never guess where I have found them. It was that day that I learned about these brave women. And actually, what was almost more shocking to me is the fact that it wasn't just women. There was men standing at their side in defiance of tyranny. I learned about the Mujahideen i Kalk, And I begged my father, I begged him, let me meet these women. Even better, even better, let me take their mantle and let me fight with them. They'd managed to not only break stereotypes and roles, 
but they'd overcome insurmountable odds to rise up to a position of authority and power. These women and, me these women and men of the MEK believe in democracy and equal rights. They believe in freedom. What a beautiful word, freedom. The Webster's Dictionary divine, defines freedom as the quality or state of being free, the absence of necessity, coercion, or constraint in choice or action, liberation from restraint from the power of another. Soon after I learned of the people of Camp Ashraf, I began corresponding with several of them. My father has given many speeches lately defending his stance that the MEK should be taken off the terrorist list. Many of you believe him and you know this to be true as well. But for those of you that might question this, that might question the stance of my father and even his character using his daughter as a tool, I want to tell you something. When my father first took over in Iraq, and this is a true story, he would warn me, Sarah, do not be so starry-eyed. Do not be so excited by these stories I tell you because they might still be falsehoods. These are terrorists we're talking about. He was as skeptical as any American would be concerning the disposition of the MEK and the perception that they were terrorists. But when I told you about my character and standing up here today, the, the apple does not fall far from the tree. My character is like my father's. And he walks with open eyes and with an open heart. When he began to realize that the people of Camp Ashraf were not terrorists, he began to advocate for them and urge me to pass along what information I could. By the time he left Iraq, my father knew without question that what he had originally been instructed about the people of Ashraf was a blatant falsehood and propaganda to empower corruption and ruthless men. Now, after all these, this uneducated person, uh, apostate prophet, which I have asked many times now to have a real debate with him, a third wrong, because those two times were just... Uh, friendly dialogue, which I, I regret. <clears throat> but he's, he knows that he has made a great mistake, so he's running away. And this uneducated person, <clears throat> he is trying to, uh, you know, make fun of uh, Prophet Muhammad and things that happened 1400 years ago. He doesn't know things that happening today in 21st century. Hey everyone and welcome, this is the Apostate Prophet. We all know who the first person on the moon was, right? Mohammed. He didn't just walk on it, he split it in two. <laughs> okay, before we get into this, I want to set something straight. Even though many refer to this as Mohammed splitting the moon, uh, the actual belief is that Allah split the moon for Mohammed. In the Quran, the event is mentioned very briefly. It says, the hour has come near and the moon has split. Looking at the Quran, there is actually not much to make of this story because the Quran doesn't tell much. The story that Muslims believe in becomes much clearer if you read the Hadith because that's what they believe in. Okay, this AP doesn't understand anything like those uh, uh, extremists, uneducated extremists who just follow a Hadith blindly and this guy is also, you know, uh, using that fabricated hadith about Prophet Muhammad splitting the moon and he used it against, uh, you know, Islam because the verse doesn't say that the Prophet Muhammad split the moon. It's talking about the hour when the end comes, the moon will split. How many pieces? God doesn't say. Billions of pieces, okay? So God doesn't say Prophet Muhammad split the moon to half, all right? So in Quran, there are many verses that says that Prophet Muhammad didn't have a single uh, miracle. Otherwise, you can deny accepting the Hadith, which makes you a non-believer in Sunni Islam, and can take only the Quran first. And nowhere in Quran says that if you don't believe in Hadith, you are non-believers. Just because some Sunni Muslim says that, it doesn't mean that all Muslims, uh, I mean, it doesn't mean that you are, you become a non-believer. By rejecting a fabricated hadith doesn't make you non-Muslim. By rejecting all hadith doesn't make you non-Muslim either. Just this uh, uneducated apostate prophet and some ISIS, Taliban, not some ISIS, but ISIS and Taliban, those extremists, they believe the same. Okay, 
So this apostate prophet is also like ISIS and Taliban. Sadly, the Quran verse also says that the moon was split. Thank you again for watching this video, my brothers and sisters.